Well, we've been talking about this day for some time. We had our evangelism seminar in January, and we've been preparing ourselves to go through some of these things. And what we're doing tonight, now this is not consecutive, but for the next nine Sunday nights where I will be presenting lessons, we will see this chart before us, which will eventually get hung in the old library with all the other evangelism supplies. And what we're going to do over the next nine weeks is we're going to go through these booklets. There's a point behind this, and we'll see all that as it dives through. But the first thing I want you to think about is I want you to think about Matthew chapter 7, specifically Matthew chapter 7, verse 29. Go ahead and turn there because Jesus was teaching. And any time Jesus begins to teach, we need to pay attention to what happened while Jesus was teaching and we need to pay attention to what happened when the people were listening, when the people were leaving, and when the people were living their regular lives after Jesus was teaching. It just so happened that Jesus taught something that you and I know it's very similar or very simple. You go back to the preceding verses and you read in verse 24 that we've got to be someone who hears the sayings of Jesus and someone who does them and he says, I like them unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. In other words, everything we do needs to be built upon a foundation. Now that foundation cannot be you. That foundation cannot be me. That foundation cannot be the church. That foundation cannot be opinion. You and I know that we live in a day where opinion rules. I think. I want Here's a new one. I will. Opinion rules our world. But when it comes to things that are biblical, think about what I just said. When it comes to things that are biblical, there's only one foundation. And Jesus was illustrating something to us here, that there is a foundation. But watch what happens after Jesus concludes his teaching, verses 28 and 29 came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, his teaching, verse 29, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. The scribes ruled in opinion. Well, I think, well, I wish, well, I want, well, I will. But Jesus taught very plainly because he was God because he was sent by the Father, because he was going to the cross, Jesus taught with authority. You and I, as we live today, can teach with authority because we can back up what we teach with Scripture. That's why when we start talking about the Back to the Bible series, it's a three-part series, and what we're going to do tonight is we're going to go through just two sections in this book together. Because everything we're doing in tonight has to do with our evangelism ministry that has bringers, that has teachers. This is the teaching portion. And as we go through the next nine weeks, this being one of the nine, we're going to be centered around that teaching portion. Now, here's the reality. You may not ever want to teach someone in this method. And let me tell you something. You don't have to use this method. You may be uncomfortable teaching someone. And guess what? That's okay. You, you may not feel equipped. Well, here's something you can do. You can begin to equip yourself. I'm not telling every person in this room tonight that you must go out and use these books and, and do it the way I'm going to suggest to you tonight. There are many ways to teach Scripture. What, what is the point of teaching the Bible? It's the Bible. But I want you to notice something as we go through these books. Every statement that's made in these books, guess what? And guess where it comes from? This book is great because it is an arrangement of scriptures. It's an arrangement of things that you and I can do. Now, one of the things you want to note, if you're going to use this to teach someone, as you notice in the evangelism seminar, and as we noted in the previous sermon, talking about our evangelism ministry, it's not just about the Bible study. Remember that. It's about building a relationship. So this is not the first thing you're going to do. You're not going to walk up to somebody in the street and say, hey, I've got this booklet. Come study with me. You remember in the evangelism seminar, Rob Whitaker taught us that that's not going to work. And the truth is, we already know that, don't we? How many times have you walked up to somebody and said, come to church with me, and they never came? Almost most of the time, right? 
if it's just cold out of the blue, because there's no relationship. We'll be talking about that as we go through on Sunday mornings as well, but tonight is all about these booklets, how you and I can learn from them and how we can use them as we do study with other people. So that's what we're going to do. This is the first of three, and each booklet will take three weeks to do. Now, here's the side note about these booklets. They're designed to be used in one sitting. We're not using them tonight in one sitting. We're not using them next Sunday night in one sitting. We're not going to use them in the next Sunday night in one sitting. Three weeks on each one, because here's what we want to do. We want to have a command right here, right here, of the scriptures that are going to be used. So let me give you a Sunday night challenge. If you, if you want another challenge, here's a good one. Here's something you can do. Start studying these passages. Start memorizing these passages. Start familiarizing yourself with these passages so that you are equipped should the time arise, if the occasion arise where you can study the gospel with someone using this very simple method. So here we go. We're going to start off by looking at what's involved in this. Now what they suggest with these is for you to take your Bible, use the scriptures, because you'll notice on the inside of these, the entire scripture is not printed. This is for you and whoever's studying to take out a pen and write in this based on what the Scriptures say. And we'll do some of that as we go through in our evening. But there are about five different segments in this one. We're going to look at our authority in religion, which is the first section. And then we're going to look at the second section, which is the Holy Spirit guided, guided the apostles in all truth. What we're going to do is we're going to look at every Scripture, and we're going to answer every question in these two segments to familiarize ourselves with the information that's contained. That way, we learn how to use the books, and hopefully, we learn something about Scripture as we go through together. So here is page number one. Now, all the passages will be on the screen, but remember, when you're doing this in a Bible study, you'll be turning that Bible somewhere. You'll be going there because it's not all in the book for you. The first one is John 8, 32. And it reads this way, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Look how simple this is. If you're studying with someone, and you're in page number one, you're in point number one, you, you turn to John 8, 32, and, and I would suggest to you that they read some, you, you read some, don't make them do all of that. How off-putting would that be if you sat there and just quizzed them? Don't make it feel like a quiz, just take your time, go through it, it's okay. So you, you read the passage, and, and, and the question and the statement is, Jesus says, the blank will make you free. Well, you read the, the passage, and what does it say? The truth will make you free. So you see what he's trying to do in this study? When it was put together, this is by Bobby Bates, Jesus says, the truth will make you free. What does that do for us? It takes it away from us, because now truth is not to me. Now truth is not to you. Now truth is not to us, but where does truth come from? Jesus said it, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And, and as we go through it, you'll see where truth comes from. So the first thing they'll write down is truth. You take them to John 4, 24, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And that second question is real simple. That second statement, Jesus tells us we must worship God in spirit and in truth. So do you see how simple this is? If you have a Bible and you have one of these little green booklets, don't you think you could do this? I think every person in this room, including many of our children, could look these passages up, could read the passages, and, and could make the statements. Jesus says the truth will make you free. Jesus tells us we must worship God in spirit and in truth. So you've already covered two of the passages that are right here. So you continue on. Now, here's my one caution for you. If you're doing this, don't spend a lot of time. Don't spend a lot of time because this is set to be done in, in one 90 minute period. Now that's probably the thing that scares us the most because if you've done anything, if you just looked at this, how many scriptures are in it? A whole lot. If I preached a sermon with this number of scriptures and I started this morning, we would still be here. This is a lot. But look at what you're doing. It's not about who. It's not about our opinion. It's not about their opinion. It's not about the world's opinion. Where does this take us to? Every time it brings us back to Scripture, so we see what we find. We go to the next passage, and you have them go there. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Well, it gives us a question. What is truth? 
Well, you already know the answer to that because it's the Word of God. It's right here in John 17, 17. Thy Word is truth. It's not my Word. It's not your Word. It is God's Word that truly matters. You have John 14, 23 through 24 that asks the questions about the teaching of Jesus was from who? You read the passage and you'll learn that the teachings of Jesus was from the Father. Look at the last part. It's not mine, but the Father which, what? Sent me. Most people, if they're interested in Scripture, they already know that Jesus was sent by the Father. But what Jesus taught, they may not know that this was from the Father. So thus, maybe that will help us understand that a lot of the statements Jesus made. I and the Father are one. In what? Not only in who they are in God, but also in what they teach. Because Jesus taught what? What the Father taught. So we're learning something about God as we go through and as we see. You move into the study, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. This is probably one of those passages that you and I need to know more because as you look at the Bible, well, you look at the Old Testament, you look at the New Testament, and God has spoken to man in different ways and in different avenues. And, and maybe the question arises, well, what about us today? Well, this helps answer that. So you, you see what's happening? Now, now here's something that I want, I want to tell you about this. You, you may be going through here, and, and you may be studying this, and, and, and maybe somebody asks a question that you don't know. Do you, want, do you want me to tell you what the preacher's biggest fear is when he's teaching a Bible class? You want to know the secret. Because eventually, somebody's going to ask a question and you're going to go, huh. Huh. And you're going to feel like you've got to give an answer. You don't. You know what it's okay to say? You, you know, let me, let, let me get back to you on that. And here's what you do. Write their question down. Because you'll never remember it. Write their question down because you'll never remember it. Would you remember it? Maybe, maybe you would, but, but, but if you write that question down, you know what that person's going to think? I'm important. As you're going through this with someone, the whole point of this is to make that one person the most important person in the room. So if they have a question, write it down. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in the times past and the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, see that, that's going to be our answer, whom he, or whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the worlds. Well, we learn a lot in that passage. You might be tempted to talk about Jesus who made the world, but look at the question in Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Today God speaks to us through, through who? The Son, it'd be really easy, it'd be tempting to me, I don't know about you, but it would be tempting to me to talk about creation, not the time. Not the time. This is your outline. It is not your license. This is your outline. It's not your license. That question may come up, well, what about creation? You remember what Rob Whitaker talked about in the seminar? Well, let's get back to that. Always bring them back to where you're at because there's a purpose in this. This is all about authority. This is not about creation. Even though it would be great to talk about creation, wouldn't it? But we're trying to build the authority of the Scriptures to the person who wants to know more about God. So we move forward because we find the answer. We look at John 3.35. The Father loved the Son and has given all things to His hands. The question is, God has given what? How much into the hands of Jesus? Well, the answer is right there in the text. So let me stop us for just a minute. Do you see what's happening? Do you see what's happening? Who gets to give the answers? We might be tempted to say, well, the person that we're asking the question to, and that's a good observation. You might be tempted to say, well, you know, we'll give the answer if it's incorrect. Where's the answer come from? Okay, we're building something. We're trying to back away and let the answers stand off the page. Because if the answers will ever stand off the page... Well, there's no way around them, is there? That's why Jesus taught having authority. Because he, he was the answer. We're not Jesus. But we certainly can point people back to Jesus. And, and the Father gave all things to the Son. And, and I can answer that question as I study about the authority of Jesus. As I move forward, I think about Matthew 28, 18. You and I have studied this passage over and over and over and over again. Well, Jesus has all what in heaven and earth? 
It's all power, isn't it? Jesus came to speak to them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Well, what's the answer? Do you see what he's doing? You think about John 17 verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life as many has given them. And Jesus has authority over what? Well, look at the answer. All, it's directly from the text. So, so you may be scared tonight thinking, well, I don't know if I can do this. I promise you, every answer is right here. And all you have to do, all I have to do when using this method is look it up. Isn't that easy? Just as we're doing it tonight. Just look it up. And, and then we have it ready. Maybe, maybe this is what you'd like to do. It certainly, if I ever used these, would be what I would do. I would have a lot of those passages kind of pre-printed out so we could see what's going on because there's something we know about people. Sometimes people have a hard time finding where things are. Have you ever noticed that? People that have no familiarity with the Bible. Maybe even people that have been Christian for a number of years, they struggle. Where's that book? Well, well maybe, maybe what we could do is, is use something like this PowerPoint tonight to help us. There's all sorts of different ways to do this. What we have to do is find a way that we're comfortable with in studying scriptures with others. So we have John 17, verse 2. All flesh was given into the authority of Jesus. Three more passages in this particular scene. Two questions on this one from Ephesians 1, 20 through 23. But it's in 22 through 23 that's on your screen because there's the answer. He hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fulfilleth all in all. Well, God has made Jesus to be head over all things to the what? Well, the answer is given to us right there in the passage. To the church. To the church. You read the second question. Does this mean that Jesus has authority over the church? The answer is yes. Look, look at the passage. Let the passage answer it. How do you know that? Well, all things are under his feet. How many things? All. Does that not include the church? This is a really simple way for you to study and for me to study and to study with someone else. As I've been doing, I'll give you little suggestions. Here, here's, here's suggestion number 510 or whatever it is tonight. Here's what I suggest you to do. Don't just memorize these passages. Don't just read these passages, but know why they're there. Take this, this little booklet, and you start at John 8, 32, and, and you read that verse, and, and you see what happened before it, and you see what happened after it, and maybe what you'd want to do in your booklet, because... You can write in these, that's okay. You can have yourself a little master booklet. Maybe right here above John 8, 32, you write a note. This is why that passage is there. And, and this is a verse that references that just in case there's a question and it gives us a great time to study. And Ephesians 1, 20 and 23 is, is a wonderful area for us to be able to see. You have John 12, verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that rejecteth him. And the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Well, who's going to judge and, and what judgment's going to be given? You know, we hear a lot about judgment, don't we? You know the verse that's, that's famously used, judge not that you be not judged. Pe people know that passage, but, but, but people struggle with John 12, 48 because the answer's so plain, sometimes we make it so complicated. So here's the question, that judgment, we will be judged by the words of who? Well, go back to the verse. He that rejecteth me, who's the me? He that rejecteth me. That's why you'll need to go through here and know why it's there and what was before it and what's after it because if you don't, you might not know that that me is Jesus because he's the one that spoke them, that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. Well, who is that? That's Jesus. So what's going to judge us? It's the words of Christ that will judge us. We're building the authority of religion. Two questions with John 6, 68. Simon Peter answered to him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Simple question, isn't it? Who has the words of eternal life? We'll go back to the text. It's Jesus that has the words to eternal life. Now, this is a big one. This will probably be a discussion point where things slow down where things slow down and someone says, well, my mama said, sat in on a Bible study with a friend of mine's family, 
It was his parents, his mother and his father. And he said, my mama was a, I'm not going to mention the religious name. My daddy was a, insert religious name. My grandmama was a, insert religious name. My grandmother was a, and he went through this list of all his family that was that way. And he said, and I'm going to die a... Should we go to anyone else, our parents, our preachers, our relatives, our friends for eternal life? What's the answer, John 6, 68? Lord, who shall we go to? You're the one that has the words of what? Eternal life. This may be a hard point in the study, but that's okay. Here's my caution, and we remember the evangelism seminar. If you weren't there, get a copy of the lessons. If you weren't there, we'll get you the handbook. We'll get you everything that you need. It's all in the evangelism area. Remember what he said? Remember what he cautioned you on? Let me summarize it real easy. Don't turn them away. It'd be easy to say, well, your mama was wrong. It'd be real easy, wouldn't it? It'd be real easy to say, well, you know, that's not what the Bible says. And that's true. The mama was wrong. The Bible is right. But try to revert them back without being confrontational. That's what this entire method is all about. So what we've done so far in the first part of this is we've built the authority. We move to the second part that we're going to look at. And this one will take us a lot less time than the first. You see some sections are smaller than the others. Now, by show of hands, who wants to teach a class on the Holy Spirit tonight? <laughs> if you could see my pockets, my hands are in my pockets. You too, huh? Okay, here, here, here's what we learn. We're being challenged with this little green book tonight. Because if you're going to study with somebody, you're going to have to know something about the Holy Spirit. But I promise you, this section is not as complicated as you think it is. Anytime we see the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, we kind of panic, don't we? We get a little tight-chested. We, we don't know what to say. We, we're not sure how to answer questions. Well, what and how do you answer the questions? Don't make it up. Just, just let it fall where it falls. And, and, and maybe we'll learn. We, we needed to learn something of this. So, so let's think about John 14, 26. And, and let's read this passage. I believe this is the most important passage about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He's got two questions for us. He's got two questions. Did Jesus say the Holy Spirit would teach them all things that Jesus said to their remembrance? Well, what's the answer to that? What, what did Jesus say? Was he not going to teach these people and he's not going to remind these people through the Holy Spirit of the things that Jesus taught? The answer is yes. That's what it says here. The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send. Don't get trapped up on who's going to send it. That could be a long discussion. The Father is going to send the Spirit. The Spirit is the Comforter. And the Comforter is going to remind all things that who taught? That Jesus taught. This is how you and I know. This is how we know that when I read the writings of Paul, when I read the writings of Peter, when I read the writings of John, who, who am I reading about? Whose teachings? The same things that Jesus would teach. Did Jesus say that? He sure did right here. And when the apostles taught by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, were they teaching their own words or the words of Jesus? What's the answer, John 14, 26? They taught the words of Jesus. So when Paul taught about hard things in 1 and 2 Corinthians, when, when Peter wrote about hard things in 1 and 2 Peter, when, when John wrote about hard things in 1, 2, and 3 John, because there are some hard things in those books, where did that come from? The same teachings that Jesus taught, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, was going to remind them. So, so where does this book come from? And, and what, what words is this book all about? It's about our Lord, isn't it? It's about the Savior. So you're building common ground. Authority is in the Word. And the Word comes from Jesus. And, and those that wrote, they were inspired and they were reminded of Jesus. This might be a time... 
where you also, in your panic, because how many people want to teach that class about the Holy Spirit tonight? Where we might say, you know, here's what I think. That's dangerous. You know what you do after you answer these two questions? You say, well, let's look up John 16, verse 13. It's okay to move through a segment. John 16, 13, as we read it in this particular scene, albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that he speaketh, or that he speaks, and he will show you things to come. Now here's the question. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would guide the apostles into blank truth. What's the answer? It's circled for you. Into all truth. John 16, 13 and John 14, 26 back one another up. They mean the same thing. They promote the same thing. They show the same thing. Also, when you go to Jude 3, the next passage that he has for us in this particular scene to look at and to see, it's this way. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. By the way, is salvation common? What's that mean? Somebody's going to ask you that. What's that mean? What's the common salvation? Well, it's pretty simple. Sometimes we make it complicated, but you can be saved. You can be saved. The world can be saved. I can be saved. How? In the same exact way. Jesus died to build the church, right? Jesus set the requirements for the entry into the church, right? Jesus established baptism, correct? Therefore, if I follow the authority of scriptures, if I follow what the Holy Spirit taught through the apostles, I know about that common way. You might get that question. When I wrote unto you or gave Jesus to write you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Here's the question. Might be really tempting to say, you know, let's talk about the faith and let me defend it. Not the time. Was the faith delivered in the lifetime of the apostles? Go to Jude 3. The answer is yes. It was delivered while they were there. And thus he writes this next question. It follows in on page number 4. Don't miss that. Sometimes they fall over to the next page. So if you're in this one, you may be tempted to say, well, well let's move on, but you'll miss a question. So, so be familiar with the book enough to know the questions roll over. Since the apostles were guided into all religious truth in their lifetime, should we expect to receive any new revelations today? Well, somebody might say, yes. How do, how do you handle that? Well, yeah. Well, you, you know, I heard a preacher once say this. Or someone might say, this is probably where this is going to come up. You know, in the millennium, talking about a thousand year reign of Christ, which is foreign to Scripture, by the way, how, how do you direct them back? How do you direct them back? Well, a simple way to be, if you just look at that question, and as they start asking questions, you can say, well, what does Jude 3 say? See what you're doing? You're circling them back to where? You're circling them back to where? Every time. You're circling them back to Scripture. And thus the only answer that can be given is no. Now, what we'll do as we come back to this next time is, is we'll look at this next segment. The inspired word is our only guide in religion. And then next week we will talk about we must not add or take away from God's word. And, and then we'll end our lesson next week. We'll come back in our third week on Sunday nights. And we're going to spend a section... Are we under the law? Under which law? And then we'll go into a section. And what we'll do in that third week is we're going to do something extra. This is something that you'll need to bring a pen for because on the back page, your summary page, what we're going to do together is we're going to write down scriptures. So we're going to look at the lessons we've learned and we're going to see, number one, the teaching of Jesus was from God. Well, what we're going to do together is we're going to write out beside number one, the scriptures that help us look at that. So that way we are prepared. If someone asks a question, I don't have to fumble through the book. In, in my manual, I already have some scriptures written down. We're going to get ahead of the curve. That way we're prepared. What we're trying to do in looking at these booklets is we're trying to get familiar with the scriptures. That's why we encourage you to read your Bible every day. 
That's why we spend all the time putting a daily Bible reading calendar together. That's why we spend all this time doing all these things so that you would have things like this. I, I, I'm glad these were put together, aren't you? Because really, how many of you have been scared to death to do a Bible study before? Every person in this room, me included, before. How many of us let that just, just, just stop us? All of us from time to time. But, but look how simple this is. Now, I said this in the beginning, I'm going to say it at the end. Is this the only way you can study the Bible with someone? No. I have my own method that I use. But I couldn't tell you how I do it in, in such a simple way because I, I just know how I would do it. But this is a way that every one of us can go through the Bible. Remember the name, back to what? Back to the Bible and have a simple, uniform way that every one of us knows I do want to say this too, if you're studying with somebody, it's always good to have somebody with you. Find a study buddy. Take that person with you. They don't have to speak the whole time. Maybe you want to be the silent partner. And you can interject when you know something and, 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 and that's, that's your question. Well, well, that'd be good too. So you know what we're seeing? This is not for us to do alone. Number two, as we think about concluding tonight, this is not for just 10% of the congregation to be involved in. What I'm hoping as we go through these little books is that every person in this room, tonight, next Sunday, the next Sunday, six more Sundays as we go through the blue booklet and the red booklet, I hope that every one of us say when we end the lessons, boy, that was so simple, I can do that. I think every one of us tonight can say, I can read those scriptures, I can answer those questions, and I can study them, and I can even say, well, let me get back to you can't we all do that? I think every one of us can. Don't let this program be overwhelming. It's easy with something like this. Oh, we look at that board and we see all those things up there and we just think, I got to do that. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't, don't make yourself think that this is just for you because this is just for us. And if we'll commit tonight, every person, every one of us, if we'll commit tonight to say, I can do this, guess what we're going to do? We're going to study the Bible with somebody. And we hopefully, as we go through, we'll, we'll, we'll make that statement every night. I can study the Bible with someone. I know every person in this room can go through the first two segments because we can look up the Scriptures, we can find the answers, and we can write them down. Now, as we go through this, we'll be letting out different information as the elders make decisions on this. This, this program is being headed by the elders. As we get into our compassion cards, that's going to be headed by them. Every decision will be made by them. But, but here's the truth. If we just leave it to them to do, not because they're weak, because they're not, it'll never get done. If we just leave it to five or six people and we think they can have, that, that's not how this goes because every, listen to me, every one of us can do something, can't we? And as we go through, we'll find things for all of us. Matter of fact, some of you have already sent me a message. Hey, can you find me something to do? We'll find you something to do. There's something all of us can do because it's right here, isn't it? Isn't that where the answer goes? Jesus taught with all authority. Where's the authority today? It's right here. And you and I can take the authority that's given by God and we can open it up to somebody else and we can truly find the answers. I know this is not a normal lesson where we think about the invitation, but for just a minute, we need to talk about the invitation. Nathan's picked out a song for us to sing. I know this is not a convicting lesson. These are not designed to be convicting lessons. They're designed to be informational. But here's something that I know you know, and I know that I know. If someone else in this world needs this book, you know what that means? I need this book. Because in it are the words of life. And remember, what will set us free? The truth will set us free. Maybe tonight you're realizing something and you're just seeing it for the first time and, and you realize you need to come back to your Lord. Well, if you're a Christian, there, there's no greater hope than to know that you can come back to the Lord. Maybe you're here tonight and, and you realize you need to become a Christian. Well, what, what a great time it would be. Maybe you want to study these more. And let me tell you, we do that with you if that's what you want. We, we, we take it on your pace if that's what you want. We, we, we do what you want. Because guess where the answers come from? Though this is written 
by Bobby Bates, you know what he did? He took this book, he wrote some questions, and then he let this book give the answers. That's what we need. That's how we become Christians. We listen to God, we follow God. So maybe tonight you need to make your life right with the Lord. What a great time it would be. Maybe you need to become a Christian for the very first time. What, what, what a great thing that would be if you need to do that. All supplies are ready. Nathan's picked out a song. Let, let's think about our souls. Let's think about our eternity. And let's stand and sing and respond accordingly.